Preparations are underway for today's running of the Kentucky Derby, postponed from the first weekend in May. But the stands at Churchill Downs won't be filling up because of the pandemic. Across the state, in Lexington, there's another story racetrack. Keeneland was founded in 1936, and this fall will host its second Breeders' Cup. It's also making history with a coming leadership change. Everyone around this community and the equine community at large has a Keeneland story. It's a very special place to a lot of people. Shannon Arvin is the president-elect of Keeneland Racecourse, a track that isn't as well known as Churchill Downs, but holds its own in the horse racing world. One of my favorite stories of Keeneland would be when we hosted the Breeders' Cup in 2015. An American pharaoh came around the stretch and won when you've got the Triple Crown winner, the first one since 1978 and affirmed. And that was so exciting to be here and be a part of that. With his Triple Crown title and that Breeders' Cup win, American pharaoh became the sport's first Grand Slam champion. Each year, Keeneland hosts several high-stakes races, giving away purses in the millions. It also serves as the most prominent thoroughbred auction house in the world, with gross sales of more than $627 million in 2019. What happens at the sale? People do get in bidding wars, and it's fascinating. One million fifty. Anyone else? One million. I have right here. One million dollars. Thank you, Ralph, the winner. The way people bid, it's not like an art auction. It's not a very slow, you put your number up and the auctioneer takes note. It's fast. The auctioneer is talking fast, crying fast. And the bid spotters know so well, the participants, that sometimes this is a bid. I mean, I'm, I don't go in the sales ring <laughs> because I don't want to scratch my nose and be mistaken for bidding on a $4 million horse. Arvin is a practicing attorney and has served as corporate counsel to the race course for more than a decade. Next year, she becomes Keeneland's first woman president and continues her family's personal connection to the institution. My grandfather was the first general manager of the racetrack in 1935 and was here until 1971. And my dad was counsel to Keeneland from the time he began as a lawyer and then ended up as trustee. Despite all of the, the family ties, this wasn't just handed to you? Absolutely not. This is years of really hard work. I hope it can be a symbol to other women in the industry and to my little girls who are 9 and 10 that with a lot of hard work and perseverance that can pay off and you really can achieve what you're hoping to achieve. What she's looking to achieve now is a broader base during this pandemic, even without fans in the stands. Instead of its traditional spring meet, Keeneland held a five-day summer meet in July. Fans wagered $63 million. Wagering on U.S. horse races topped $1 billion in July. That's a nearly 17% increase over wagering last year. This time last year, we'd had 150 hours of national TV exposure for our sport. And this year so far, we've had 600 hours. So as other major sports have not had as many opportunities to play, We've had an opportunity to, to push forward, which has been really important. Also important, the safety of the thoroughbreds. Shut them down. Last year, there was national outcry after nearly two dozen horse deaths in the span of three months at Santa Anita Park Racetrack. You spearheaded uh, safety initiatives for the industry, but last year there was a lot of talk about horse fatalities, and nine horses died at Keeneland. You know, there should be talk about horse fatalities. It's a serious concern. We take it very seriously. We are not sparing any expense to have all the data, all the experts, everyone available to make sure that this sport is as safe as it possibly can be. And we, we're not perfect, but we are committed to doing that and to getting better. Where did you need to get better? We need better pre-race examinations. I think that's one of the aspects. We've recently hired an equine safety director, as have a number of other tracks across the country, to be sure that we are in touch with our thoroughbreds and we know the athletes so that we can prevent an injury before it happens. In November, the racing season for the world's greatest thoroughbreds ends at this finish line, and all eyes will be on Keeneland. You're hosting your second Breeders' Cup this year in November. How is that one going to look different than the one you had earlier? 
I think everything is different in 2020, right? I think that's what we've realized. We will not have as many fans, and so we're just getting creative about how we can reach people and help them see the excitement of our sport. You know, one of the greatest things about being at the races is the roar of the crowd. We had a race meet here in July, and we had 600 was the most people that we had on any day because of our limitations. Normally, we'd have 42,000. Um, and while that was fairly surreal, and I definitely miss the roar of the crowd, it's that thunder of the horse's hooves that you hear when they're rounding the turn for the finish line. And you, you still hear that loud and clear. Not many fans in the stands, but they found a way to make COVID work. Quite a woman.